Some of the most uncanny and terrifying videos lay just beneath the seemingly innocent surface of this website. Some are intentionally creepy and others, not so much. Today, we'll be covering some of the most unnerving videos on this website. This is the third installment, so feel free to check out the other two episodes linked below. I tried to find mainly obscure videos to showcase, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Oh, and check out my social media, by the way. Let's head back to 1991. This year was the time when games like Final Fantasy IV, A Link to the Past, Joe and Mac, and Metroid 2 released. This was also the time when a very familiar blue hedgehog would blast onto people's TV screens for the first time. Wow! Oh, what's this one? Oh, this is a Sonic the Hedgehog from Sega Genesis. Hey, look at these radical colors, huh? Wow, Sonic's fast, too. No. It wouldn't be long until this lone blue hedgehog made a name for himself, with the game selling 15 million copies and Sonic becoming Sega's new mascot. Over time, people would also begin to document their playthroughs by uploading recordings online. Almost all of these recordings were seemingly innocent. I mean, it is Sonic after all. So when a video called Sonic 1 Green Hill Zone All Axe was posted onto YouTube, nobody batted an eye. Sega! From what we can see at first glance, this looks like a normal playthrough. I mean, I'm basically showing you the video in the background. There's nothing different with the audio or anything. Well, at least not at first. Alright, well, that wasn't normal, obviously. Maybe the rest will be though, right? I don't typically play entire clips, but this one in particular needed to be shown in its entirety because I genuinely don't know what's being said in the background. The CC is just automatic, so subtitles don't help at all either. If you happen to figure out what they're saying, feel free to clarify it for everyone below. The second level is virtually normal. They play through it, die, and... Nothing happens which personally surprised me. Afterwards, they play through again and finish the level. It's time for another bonus game, and if it's like the last one, it should be an interesting experience to say the least. So, we can't see anything that's going on. And there's also a human face, so that's cool. After the ending finishes, something odd happens at the start of the next level. It's not much, but I'm sure it was easy to notice that the music started late. Other than that, the level is relatively normal somehow. Even the boss battle goes fine. And then... Everything goes silent. A face and text appear on the screen. I know you're recording this, Eric. I hope you know it won't save you. It won't make your parents believe you. I've heard them speaking to you. Your mother thinks you're just telling stories. You keep lying, though. I'm sure it'll work out. It did for your father, after all. It then goes silent before the outline and then full view of a distorted face appears. The audio sounds like distorted screaming. I'm guessing that this is Eric's father. Really, all I have to say about this is that it seems interesting, and you can check the video out in the link below. Poochie and Pansy is a name that I'm sure you've heard before. Well, some of you at least. If you haven't, Poochie and Pansy was a series that ran around 12 years ago and has been rebooting currently. 
The reboot is a little bit different from the original though. See, the original was actually part of a larger ARG or alternate reality game. The whole purpose of the game was to capture or find the Gangadiddle, a creature that looks like this. Because of that, there are a lot of creepy episodes and moments in the series, for example. Pansy, how do I get you down from there? Welcome, Poochie! If you ever want to see your little girlfriend alive again, you will do exactly as I say. You sit right where you are, and I'm going to come over there and take your eyes! Despite all of the creepy moments I've just shown you, one video stands out in particular to me. It used to be the 4th or 5th video on the channel before the revision started a couple years ago, but now it's the 2nd video and it's called, A Special Announcement from Poochie and Pansy. Even rewatching this video years later for today's episode still made me very uncomfortable, so just keep that in mind. The video begins with Poochie, Pansy, and the witch standing in an open field while Poochie begins to speak. At this point we can already see some video distortion, but it's the next section that gets really intense. At least, for me that is. The music in Poochie's voice slows down as the characters on the screen distort, getting more and more terrifying as a reversing noise in the background gets louder and louder. If you're confused as to why the witch in the background turned into a hooded person with a white face, don't worry, it just has to do with the ARG. The noise continues as we see multiple images, first a mask with a finger sticking through the mouth, which was first seen in Poochie and Pansy Part 3. We then see the witch in an image of the same area we saw before in red and black that says, You are alone. This was also shown in Part 3. Next it shows an oddly distorted clip of seagulls on a car. We then see a weird skeleton that's actually in a screamer in part 1 of the series. Next, we're shown a dim red room as the loud audio slowly fades out and we can hear talking in the background. When we go to the next screen that repeats, trying to reach you, we begin to hear audio which I'll transcribe on screen. This is the greatest mass extinction in Earth's history, with 96% of all life forms disappearing from the face of the Earth. Well, that's a terrifying concept for most people. Some unseen and uncontrollable force wiping out everything at an inexplicably high rate. Next we see several images, some of which we've seen before. The ones we haven't seen include Poochie with no eyes, a reference to when he has to give his eyes to the witch to save Pansy, and on top of that multiple images of Soichi Suji's son from the Junji Ito manga, The Secret of the Haunted House. During this time another audio is played, which I'll try to transcribe as best I can. After this, the person continues to walk down the hallway as the music becomes more and more distorted. It flashes back to that same red and black background and says, All dead. Even though Scare Theater already did it, I may make a video on the series for fun in the future, but for now, I'll leave it there. Curse YouTube videos used to be more of a thing a few years ago than now. For example, we have videos like Mariana Mortigar Glesgorv or The Grifter, videos that would allegedly cause very negative adverse effects to the viewer. Considering I watched both years ago and I'm still fine, for the most part, I guess that these curses aren't actually real. However, that doesn't make the videos any less creepy. Actually, they can still be pretty unnerving with or without the cursed backstory, which leads into the supposedly cursed video I'll be talking about here today. This is another one I watched years ago and so far nothing has happened, but still I'll only be playing small snippets of the actual audio to avoid cursing anyone in the audience. It starts off with a high pitched laughing noise as a drawing of two figures holding hands are shown. Soon, a chanting begins in the background under the continuous laughing noise. As the video switches to a picture of flowers, you can also hear some type of haunted moaning in the background as well. As the picture gets distorted, the laughing almost turns into a high-pitched wail of sorts. It then switches to a picture of Pennywise that flips back and forth before going back to a field of flowers, one that zooms in multiple times itself before distorting. During this entire time, the high-pitched laughing continues. It then zooms into the face before zooming into even more flowers. During this time, the laughing changes into a melodic chant of sorts. And then it switches into the picture of a clown and the audio goes absolutely ballistic. 
When it finally calms down, it switches into multiple pictures we've seen before and then the audio gets even more insane, increasing louder and louder until the video stops. To me, this video is obviously not cursed at all. I don't even think it's necessarily scary more than it is loud, although some of the noises are pretty creepy. This just seems like another video purposely made to be scary, but what do I know? Last video I made was a video on Lavender Town Syndrome. You should watch it, but I also say that because I'll be covering possibly one of the first iterations of Pokemon game-based analog horror, and since I do want to get more people into the Pokemon content on this channel, why not cover it? Pokemon Cyan is a video by the Alchemian that was released this month on the 7th. The description of the video reads, My grandma and I recently cleaned out my brother's apartment and I found this weird cartridge. I don't know why he had it, but it looks like some weird ROM hack. This is just a little bit of the gameplay of the starting town and first route. I'll be posting more soon. A little glitchy, but the start isn't necessarily that weird. After the game loads in, however, you'll notice that things are extremely off. Although the title screen clearly states Pokemon Blue, the actual sprites in game are clearly from the second generation. I'll assume this means that the game is some odd generation 1.5 game, one that used sprites of the next generation but remained on the original Game Boy. The first house is locked, so the player walks over to a sign which says, Desmond Creek, where the ocean sleeps. The other house is unlocked, and there sits the sprite of the player's in-game mother. It says, Behind you. And after the player turns back around, the mother disappears. The player then walks upstairs, before walking straight to the Super Nintendo. The text box says, You decide to play with the Super Nintendo. Kirby Superstar is inserted into the console. You've had too much Kirby for one day. Time to go. I kind of wonder if too much Kirby was specifically a TMK reference, or if it was just coincidence. Probably the latter. For some reason this time, going downstairs causes the player to go outside instead of straight to the bottom floor. I'm not sure why that is, but I'll move on. As the music fades out, they encounter a rocket grunt who suddenly runs at them. And after everything goes silent, an EAS signal is played. The person it's playing for is Damien Reeds. This could be the brother of the player, but I doubt it since they said they cleaned out the brother's apartment, implying that he owned it and therefore making him an adult. But, maybe this actually represents either the brother kidnapping someone, or that the brother was kidnapped as a child and introduced into a new family. The screen goes black and everything stays silent for a bit before the player is finally put into a new area. This place looks like the top of a tower, considering the room shape and the staircase at the bottom of the screen. The player is somewhat transparent and slides around like gold in lost silver, signifying that the character has passed away. Considering that the rocket grunt ran up to the player earlier, it's likely that this character represents Damien. Maybe he is the brother after all. He walks up to a grave that says, R.I.P. Damien Reeds, 1983 to 1999. This of course means that Damien Reeds ended up living around 5 more years after he initially went missing. When the player attempts to go down the stairs, a text box pops up that says, You can't leave yet. Suddenly the sprite of a girl trainer appears before the screen turns into static. During this time, text appears on the screen, saying, Don't cry. I will fix you. It's hard for me to know exactly what this means, but I guess it's reasonable to say that these quotes are likely from the kidnapper to Damien. Maybe the cartridge is just haunted, but that doesn't seem like what this is. Either way, check this video out for yourself and feel free to subscribe to their channel. Yume Tuki is a game that I use a lot of music from. I'm sure you've noticed that if you've ever checked the description or pinned comment of any of my videos. But it doesn't just have a terrifying soundtrack. Well, sometimes. It's more of a terrific soundtrack, but anyway. It also has some terrifying areas. A video called You May Tuki Revisiting Zalgo was posted by Ed Plosion on August 1st of 2016. The beginning is normal enough, with Uro Tsuki, or the main character of You May Tuki, leaving her room and picking an area. In these games, you can fly through areas pretty fast to get from point A to point B, but I'll kind of explain what's going on. Basically, the player goes from Red Streetlight World, that's actually the name, look it up, and exits the area to go into the magnet room. After this, they encounter an enemy that looks like a mask on legs and destroy it, but as far as I know, you don't need to do that to get to the Zalgo room from here, so maybe they're just sadistic, I don't know. Either way, after using the magnets to bounce Urotsuki to the other side of the room, they activate the blue ball to activate the cube's bounciness. 
After doing this, they go into the next room and use the cube to bounce between a wall before defeating another enemy and heading over to a blue cube that will bounce them through a barrier allowing them to access a crack in the wall. After this, they encounter a creepy face with extremely distorted music playing in the background. Eventually, some type of voice comes in as the face continues to morph and distort. The player eventually reaches a prism and arrives in a rainy room that a large, unmoving NPC sits in. They attack the NPC continuously, which doesn't really do anything, and they leave. After that, they head home and show off the new wallpaper that interacting with the NPC got them. Maybe I'll do more Yume Tuki content in the future, but that's all for now.